not oh knowing what's going to happen. It's a light bulb party. Everybody got lit. <laughs> <laughs> David Reagan probably liked to hear that uh, joke. Back in Perry Como's day. Hey, now. Catch a fallen star and put a it in your stay. pocket. Door stay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, How folks. Much is that doggy Here we in go. The window? Still a couple of jet dryers on the track working turns one, two, and four. We're getting ready to put about 30 some jet dryers out there because the heat from the exhaust on the cars, the heat in the tires, that, that can do as much as, it, as some of these jet dryers going around here. So we have 23 cars on the lead lap as engines come to life. Two drivers, one lap down, Matt Benedetto and Trevor Bain. Kurt Busch on a lap by himself, three laps down. Corey LaJoy, Reed Sorensen, minus four. Martin Truex, minus five. DJ Kennington, six. Chad Fincham in his cup debut, 10. Ty Dillon lost 18 laps. Chase Elliott, 22, and Greg Galding, 44. Now, Mike, I got to say, I don't think there's any real excuse for not knowing what you're going to do here, because you've had 21 hours to think about it. <laughs> but the big question, Daryl, is where are, and how are you going to find grip in the corners? Well, that's the unknown. I think they know whether they're going to come down pit road, take two, four tires, whatever their strategy is right now once that pit road opens. But I can promise you nobody, not an engineer, a crew chief, or a driver has any clue what the car is going to do on track. Yesterday, Mike, remember back to the race uh, late, about uh, 150, 60 laps, that bottom kind of wore out a little bit, wore off a little bit, and they were starting to run the middle of the racetrack. I think we're going to get, see guys avoid that bottom for a little while. There was one point yesterday when we had a legitimate three and almost a four groove racetrack yeah, in the corners. And see, cooler temperatures only to me makes that take longer because that top groove also needs heat. It needs rubber to lay down on the top. It doesn't have the traction compound. It just has the surface that the tires will adhere to and build up rubber and grip up there. And when it's cold, They'll stay around the bottom longer. I know, I agree with you, Daryl. They're going to take longer to get the heat in that traction compound, so it's going to take a few laps. And I'm wondering, too, Larry, did we get a temperature from Goodyear at which these tires will start to lay rubber into the racetrack? At, at Martinsville, we had to get up to, I think, 60 degrees before the track would take rubber. And, and that's track temp. And I think it's the same here because it's the same type of surface. We talked about the corners at Martinsville being concrete. We have the same surface here all the way around. What about, but think about this, guys, the jet dryers, the jet dryers have been out on the racetrack. They're putting heat in the racetrack. True. The jet dryers are, so that's a big plus. Okay, Matt. And Mike, when you look at the, the track conditions and how to uh, deal with what we're dealing with right now, you can see the jet dryer trying to, to get this racetrack ready. But what Jerry Kaparov from NASCAR and his staff did, they came out with the jet dryer and they went around the bottom four feet, which typically they have put the traction uh, grip down and they heated up the racetrack. Then they came back and put a, a thin application. Typically they go 80-20, the PJ1 formula and the dilution solution. But because of the colder conditions, they want this track grip to firm up much faster. So they used much more uh, dilution solution to help speed up that process. So they're pretty confident what we're gonna see here shortly. Cars are rolling. A friend of mine watched the race yesterday. He said uh, today, he says, it's not April 16th. It's January 106th <laughs> in Bristol. I think he's right. Well, I hope you got your uh, taxes squared away because that was tax day yesterday. Uh, what kind of weird weekend, Mike? Fr Friday the 13th, and then yesterday was tax day. I love you, Daryl, but since the 15th fell on a Sunday, you have until April 17th. Today is a holiday in some states, Boston Marathon, Patriots Day, things like that. Whew, well, thank, I, thank goodness. We'll be at the yeah, post yeah, office yeah, tomorrow. I'm going to find out what the late penalty was. <laughs> but uh, hey, I know it's a holiday in Bristol. We know that. That's right. You know, Mike, you were asking me about working on a car during a red flag. There were obviously things that NASCAR allowed these teams to do this morning, like clean the windshield. But one thing, you know, if you're, if you're in cold weather in your passenger car, you want to let that car warm up a little bit in this type of weather. They did let them plug in the oil tank heaters. They, they have a remote oil tank tank in the rear of the car. They have heaters on them like blankets. They did let them plug them in to kind of heat that oil up in that remote oil tank. Uh-oh. <laughs> Kyle Larson got a, he got a leak in his car. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking down. Where'd that come from? 
Oh, gosh. Looking up. Man, I got to figure out where to, that's a hole somewhere. Well, now you have those roof, you have the roof hatch. Uh, so maybe a little rain sitting there and those. Well, these you know. race cars are not uh, watertight. No, no, no. So even though they put that cover on top of them, there are ways for water to get inside. What they're going to make sure they do is cover up anything electrical to make sure that none of those things get wet. I'd be hoping mine would jelly tight today going through the PJ1. <laughs> so the track is pretty dry. However, pit road is not. Mike, here's another thing to think about. Kyle Larson got that bruise on his arm. He's got a day, another day to rest at. He got a little workout yesterday, got a night to rest. He should be in good shape. Same way with Suarez. Had a little problem with his thumb. Had a night on that to rest. He should be in good shape. Now, crewmen are working hard to dry their pit areas as well as keep warm. I mean, there's a whole crew on their hands and knees right at the start finish line trying to make sure their pit box is dry. That's Austin Dillon's crew hard at work. It is amazing, though, how quickly they can dry the concrete. The track itself, I mean, it didn't take, what, 45 minutes? Pit road, it's all concrete. The teams get the blowers out, and they got that thing ready to go. Because, Mike, guess what? They're going to be in action here in just a minute. Well, I know the corners dry fast. It's about, what is it, 33 degree bank oh, in here. It takes no time to get that dry. And I would actually spoke to a Goodyear representative. They told me they're not concerned with that right side tire laying rubber. It's going to lay rubber, even Good. in these cool conditions. Good to hear. These caution laps are counting. We're at lap 208. Still threatening skies here and pop up showers throughout the region. Got to get up a little more speed, guys. A vortex. Got to <laughs> get up to about 75, 80 mile an hour for it to really kick in. We're going to get mail. <laughs> I don't care. I thought, hey, I, I was watching the national news this morning and they were talking about a vortex up east. Guys, so I said, yeah, I know where there's another one. Now, guys, Come on, you speed them up. You know, we all are looking for a little luck here on the weather. Yes. I think we just saw some because there was a huge cloud of rain that just passed by just the south us. of us and yes. just missed us. So this track could have been completely gone again, and it didn't. So I'm feeling I feel a little bit better. Yeah, there's a little bit of water out there, but we got really lucky. I don't know if the, the way this track is, a, a few raindrops doesn't seem to affect it that much. No, light, light rain, I, I think no problem here. One, it, once there's heat in the tires. I'm told there's a vortex coming from our booth <laughs> and going skyward. There's <laughs> plenty of, wet, for hey, plenty of hot air from we're right here. We're working it, baby. We're working it. So the vortex theory, which I advanced to Daryl about 20 years ago, and he adopted it as his own, is that when the cars are going around at speed, they create a rising column of hot air, and the rain stays away. Scientists have debunked it time after time, but the anecdotal evidence is it's not going to rain until they wave the checkered flag. I tell people all the time, the guys that fly the Goodyear blimp, they say when they go over the racetrack, they can feel the air from the cars as it goes up in the air. So, I mean, that's all I need. Okay. And, Mike, I just want you to know, I never had an original thought of my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I spoke too soon. I, I jinked it. Jinked what it. happened? It's raining. Oh, no. Yeah. No. It's pretty wet. All right. Ty Dillon has come down pit road, which officially is not yet open. So, there will be a slight penalty for that. And there's Trevor Bain, also under repair, and taping down the hood. Everybody's had, well, not everybody, but most cars have, ha have been caught up and swept up in at least one of the crashes that we had yesterday. Crashes and spins, there were six of them. You know, uh, yesterday I did some pace car rides, which was kind of cool. I hadn't been on a track in a while. It's kind of learned a few things about the track. They said, take them two laps. I said, dude, that's 30 seconds. You don't want a 30 second ride. I said, you got to go more than two laps. Hey, hold on. I know that pace car is fast. You tell me you run 15 second laps <laughs> in like that pace car? Felt like it. I <laughs> thought a, I was. Put a number on that thing. <laughs> hey, I thought it was. Pit road will be open. And pit road will be wet. Yeah, it's going to be damp coming down <laughs> pit road and into the pit boxes where they've been working the blowers and trying to wipe things up. Yeah, pit now before it gets real wet. <laughs> now, the big number to remember is uh, right up there near the top, 38. That's the number of laps we need to complete stage two. And once the second stage is completed, if we have to stop, the race would be official. Wow. 42 stayed out. Matt. And hey Mike, when you look at the conditions, these athletes are going over the wall 
very frigid conditions. And think about when you're a baseball player, a football player, having to try to execute these kind of conditions and not being warmed up. Ortho Carolina Sports, their motorsports program, Bill Heisel, Ken Brett, they work with a lot of these athletes to go over the wall to do exercises and stretches to try to warm up a, a lot of different muscles to execute here on Pitt Road, Vince. Well, the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is down a set of tires because they spun early in the race. They would have liked to have stayed out and saved a set, but just couldn't gamble to it. So they came in four tires for the 17, Jamie. Paul Menard in the 21 was strong yesterday. Had a pep in his step when he left the racetrack. A four tire stop here. They have an extra set. Meanwhile, the 18, a Kyle Busch. It is so cold down here. In the the pit crew getting warmed up. I can see some of their helmet visors fogging up. They get the job done, and it's clean. Now, you know what? Think about the 42. He's up front. If there is a caution, he's out of harm's way in most cases. The other thing is, those crew chiefs figure it out. What if we let Kyle Busch get back on the? What if he does get back, Kurt or Bush, Kurt yeah. Busch get a lap back? That's one for him. What if he gets another lap back? That's a fast car. They want to keep a lap down or two. The problem for Kurt Busch is the leader stayed out. Yeah, and then there was Can't. one. <laughs> so Kyle Larson and Ryan Newman did not pit, and that means that there will be no wave around. There's only exactly. a wave around when there are lap cars just, directly behind the pace car. Think how frustrating that is if you're one of those cars one lap down or you're Kurt Busch. All you needed was one more car to come down pit road. And those two drivers, Kyle Larson and Ryan Newman, they have basically – Newman has like 30 plus laps on his tires, but Kyle Larson has 53 laps plus to our point sitting there all night long. But maybe they're starting to think, you know what? We're racing for lap 250 right now, the way this weather's acting. I just like this strategy. I mean, first of all, you keep a fast car laps down. That's important. Second of all, you're on the front row out of harm's way. That's important. I think there's more pluses than there are minuses. Well, I, I think it's a great call if we only go 40 yard. We get to the end of this stage. I think he'll be fine to the end of this stage. We documented yesterday the story of uh, Canadian driver DJ Kennington carrying on his hood the emblem of the Humboldt Broncos, that junior hockey team that lost 16 members in a terrible bus crash and learned last night on Twitter that the team Gaunt Brothers Racing is going to auction off that hood after today's race and uh, the proceeds will all go to benefit the Humboldt Broncos. Great, great oh, gesture. That's fantastic. What a great tribute. Hey guys, I think I heard him say one to go. One to go. Am I hearing that right? Lights are still on on the pace car. <laughs> There's the signal. There it is. Heart rates just went up a few yeah. ticks. Yeah. <laughs> Not just mine. Wonder. Now, that means uh, Kurt Busch is going to drop back. Lead lap cars will line up toward the front of the field, so he does not get a wave around. He remains three laps down, as does Trevor Bain, and we'll double check on Matt Benedetto here. Boy, just think about poor Kurt Busch. That close to maybe pulling off a cool strategy. Now he's got to regroup. Matt DiBenedetto was the free pass, going back to the caution that put us under the red flag at lap 203. So DiBenedetto is back on the lead lap, 24 lead lap cars. Bain alone one lap down, and then Kurt Busch three laps down. Guys, we're coming to green again. Woo yes, we are. Can't wait to see what happens on that bottom group. <laughs> I can't wait either. Uh, neither can Kyle Larson and Ryan Newman. Here we go. Whoa, big loose moment for the 42 of Larson down in turn one. Whoa, man, here comes Hamlin on the inside of Kyle Busch. Hamlin's going somewhere. He's in a hurry. Oh, uh, no, Kyle Busch takes second place back. Jimmy Johnson coming around the outside of Ryan Newman for fourth. Boy, these things are waltzing all over the place. Everybody's a little loose, but uh, making it fine so far. Big gaggle here behind Brad Keselowski. Paul Menard looking at Newman. This is for fifth. And this is right about that time where that traction compound might start getting some heat and a little bit more grip. 
Newman well, that, had some damage from earlier in the race. That's tough coming off a corner underneath somebody like that. So easy to get loose or push into the guy on the outside. What's Newman got dragging? Yeah, he's got, got that a, rear bumper cover kind of hanging off, that off that there from that damage that he had earlier. Cosmetic damage. I like that. You have that here. Now it's Alex Bowman trying to get to the inside and does behind Ricky Stenhouse. Joey Logano. He doesn't mind the cold weather. He grew up in it. Hey. Hey guys, you know Brad Keselowski kind of wouldn't tip his hand. They went with left sides only on that stop right there. Everybody else did four. So Keselowski restarted in fifth. I think that 11 car, I, I tell you, I, I'm impressed. Started 25th, and here comes Johnson underneath the 18 car. That's the, the 11, the 42, and the 48. That's the best car on the and, track. And we saw this yesterday. The 18 of Kyle Busch really struggles at the beginning of the run. I think until this track really changes and starts to tighten up later in the, this race, I think you're going to see him really struggle at the beginning. Yeah, Kyle Busch went to the middle of the racetrack, and he really picked up a lot of speed yesterday. We'll see how it works today. I just think it's going to take a while for that groove to come in. Oh, Casey Kane up the oh, hill man. from Joey Logano. Here Three we go. Wide. Three wide. Something got to give. Something got to give. No, we've got a three groove racetrack, Daryl. <laughs> 95 had to give. <laughs> Oh, he might have a, tr a problem. I think he has a tire. Yeah, he saw, saw some something, debris. Yeah. Yep. Something, something flew off that car in turn two, piece but of it's debris. sitting way up above the groove. Pretty big piece of debris over in the uh, high groove of turn two. Right with Alex Bowman. Kevin Harvick just ahead, seventh Alex, place. Alex Bowman's been putting together a great race so far. They had some issues start on the inside of one of the restarts before that rain came yesterday, but fast car for him. Yeah, he and the 24, those two cars have been pretty good for Hendrick today. Yeah, and, and, and of course to Jimmy yeah. H, right, uh, 48 right there too. Bubba Wallace, Joey Logano going at it here. And we see Eric Jones there. He, he was so fast earlier in this race, made some slight contact to the outside wall, turned four, and it's just not been able to recover. Casey Kane has made it to pit road. As the battle is joined for second, Jimmy and, Johnson. And let's not forget, a year ago on a Monday, Jimmy Johnson won this race. Well, he's looking pretty good today. He's a little bit faster than the uh, than the 11 car right now, trying to find a way around him, and I think he's going to find it right here. I think his car looks a lot like Whoa, it did a year got a ago. Loose off. Really turning good. Kyle Busch trying to repass his teammate Hamlin. And does so. Seems like Kyle Busch's car not real good on a restart, but after 5, 10, 15 laps, it really comes alive. Keslowski trying to take advantage. The 66 is up there in the way, wow. and Keslowski uses Chad Fincham as a pick to hold off Hamlin. Yeah, That's nice move by move. Hamlin not to get in the back of that 66 because that was close. Boy, By here. the way, Kyle Larson is gone. Oh, he went. Remember yesterday, he had about a 10 or 12 second lead on everybody when he started up front like he did here just now. Just like you said, DW, we documented that 18 car. He doesn't like his car for, you know, whatever it is, 10, 15 laps. But boy, it start when it starts to come in, watch out. He's the only car I see out here right now that can compete with that 42 car. Larson putting the pressure on the 48. Jamie? Remember one of the last things we heard Kyle say in the race yesterday was, man, if we get a long run, these guys in front of me will be my lunch. Well, you're right. It is still needing a long run for this car to come to him. But I talked to Adam Stevens, his crew chief, and he said, we cannot focus on how the car is handling now. We need to look ahead to the end of the race because this track, as he bumps to me, the bump and run that goes around the 48. So the car, they're thinking about the end of the race and how it handles then, guys. Boy, Bubba Wallace working on Clint Boyer and Eric Alvarola here. Bubba's just a little impatient today. He's getting the job done, though. Oh, three wide down into turn one. Oh, that was almost huge. What a great save by Clint Boyer. You oh, just can't. Oh, ooh. It's too early to make a move like that. I, I, I don't think that was really. That, that's a rookie move. Yeah, but uh, Jim, what we saw. Newman gave Boyer a big shot getting into three, but he held, he held on to it. Yeah, Boyer, I'm afraid, was holding up the 43, who has now scooted past him by about six car but, lengths. And, but, but all that Bubba Walls had to do is wait another lap or two, and he would have made that move. That, uh, you, know, right. you just can't go three wide here into turn one this early in the race. When you got a yellow bumper. Every lap is urgent. <laughs> you, you don't pace yourself. You just go hard. 
Martin Truex laps down from being involved in the first crash of yesterday. Six laps down as Kozlowski goes by with Kyle Busch now second and third. I am so impressed with these left side tires on this two car. I, am, I did not think that that was going to work as well as it has, Larry. It took just a few laps for him to come in, and I'm going to tell you what. He, he is running that 42 car down right now. I don't know if it's going to be enough laps to get there before the end of stage two, but he's running him down. Well, we've heard that the, the, the PJ1, the, the traction control stuff, is is what's it's really working the left side tires hard. Kazowski must have known that. He made a good call there. Where I've really seen that those older tires on the 42 Larson are not working as well as those guys with newer tires is as he's caught lap traffic. He just doesn't seem to have as many options to be able to move around some of these cars. Remember, a lot of those cars do have fresh tires that he's coming up to lap. There's a heck of a battle right here between the 21, 24, and the 43. I mean, they're going at each other. 10th place and a playoff point or a rather a point at stake here a stage point. As uh, Kyle Larson has been caught by Kozlowski who gives him a shot and takes the lead bump and run. It's Bristol. That's what I like baby. Kyle Larson last got tires at lap 122. Oh look at Larson trying to pay him back. <laughs> Larson I appreciate did, that. I guarantee you one of those guys he didn't like that one bit. And. Going to get a little dicey here between these three leaders. Six Larson to go in stage two. That top groove. Oh, not enough grip up there yet. He's going to lose a position. I don't know. He's got a lot of steam down that back straightaway. Watch Larson go to the top. He Brad, says, well, look at Brad. He wants the bottom. Corey LaJoy is there. Brad gives him a bump, says, get out of my way. I'm the leader. I'm coming through. Oh. And there he goes. Wow. <laughs> That's what I like. Trevor Bain. Goes the lap down to the leader. Three to go. I just, I, I love that move right there. Ooh. He pushes Corey LaJoy. Corey LaJoy goes into the back bumper of the six of Bay, and he goes by both of them for Keselowski. And then how you play croquet, you send the other ball. With yeah. The, yeah. Boy, it's kind of a cat and mouse game right now. What lane do I want to be in? Which way are these slower cars going to go? Look like Kyle Busch chose a good line that time. And it looked like uh, the 42's tires, Larson's tires, were on there just about 10 laps too long. Final lap, stage two. I still think 42 mission accomplished. Kept the 41 three laps down. I don't know if that was in their mind or not, but it could have been. And he'll get an up front finish. Third stage win of the season. Counting stage one yesterday for Brad Keselowski. Kyle Busch in second, Jimmy Johnson, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson, and Bubba Wallace gets the final playoff, final point for stage two. Brad Keselowski, two for two.
sweeper picking up some loose stuff from the top of the track as we get ready to open the pits at the end of stage two. What expect Larry. I think we're going to see varying strategy here. We know Kyle Larson. He has to come. It looks like to me about everybody's coming. But Matt we may see some left sides only. And that is some conversation Larry Mack up and down pit road hearing Crucci say clean off those right side tires in case we call an audible. Jimmy Johnson will go four tires on the 48. Meanwhile the 42 of Kyle Larson last time he pitted for tires lap 121 getting those off. Vince. The 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. suffered some pretty significant damage when they checked up on the restart and he got hit in the back end. So they're going to do some damage repair, particularly on the right rear and the right side. He'll do right side tires now, then he'll exit the pits and they'll come back and do the left sides on the next stop. Jamie. Brad Kozlowski in the two has won both stages so far in this race said it starts off a little bit loose and the track really hasn't tightened up much air pressure adjustment four tires this time the 18 of Kyle Busch he said his car just won't fire off on that low air pressure no grip air pressure they added some tape and four tires for Kyle. Thanks Jamie Brad Kozlowski first off pit road ahead of Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch and we're going to dial up Brad Kozlowski. Hey Brad this is Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth you got me. Yes, sir. Can you hear me today? <laughs> there you are, man. I got you. Wow, that was impressive. I mean, you guys put left side tires on. Uh, interesting strategy called Boyd, and it really worked out. Took a couple laps for that car to get going. But tell us about the changing conditions and the strategies and everything that's going on in today's race right now. Yeah, the pace, Jeff, is just really fast. We're uh, in the 14th second bracket here, which is uh, screaming. Uh, so we just uh, got to keep up with it. I'm sure the got to slow down a little bit, but. Uh, Right now, track's fast, and the uh, discount tire forward's fast. We're going to make the most of it. All right, thanks for talking to us. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you, Ben. Brad Kozlowski has won both stages of this year's 500 lapper in Bristol. Welcome back to Monster Energy Series Racing from Bristol. 260 complete, stage three. Now to get the final point in that stage, Bubba Wallace used the chrome <laughs> horn first on William Byron and then 
on Paul Menard. We saw a lot of aggressive driving out of Bubba Wallace. And you're going to see a lot of damage to left rear quarter panels all throughout this field. But uh, I mean, a nice move. I know he, you know, I didn't uh, like the three wide that he did earlier, but that, that's all good. I mean, especially when you know that there is some rain in the air. Yeah, you know what I like about that? Drew Blickett sure must said, look, we got that right front. We got her beefed up pretty good. Use it. <laughs> Multiple pit stops for Ricky Stenhouse. Look, doesn't no even man. look like it's no, no. nothing. Uh, Stenhouse had to make a couple of stops because on the last restart, when Ryan Newman didn't get going quite as fast uh, as the leader, it really stacked everybody up on the inside lane. And Ricky's car pretty much got the worst of it. Yeah, it seemed like that whole inside lane, there was a lot of wheel spin, not a lot of grip, and that whole lane didn't go. I think it'd be a little different story this time. Everybody on fresh tires, I think we'll see a little bit different, a uh, little bit different restart. But I tell you, that first 10 cars right up there, there's some serious racing going on right up there amongst those first 10. Ford Chevrolet on the front row, Toyota's in row two, Chevy's in row three as they approach the Geico restart zone. Green flag. Well, Hamlin thought about taking a look and he's going to get there. Man, he went that outside and it worked. It stuck. See what happens here. Oh, I think that's an awesome move for Denny Hamlin. Hamlin has had probably the best car uh, working his way through the field and in the front now, and the uh, car looks really, really good. Right Great job Alex on Bowman. Alex yep. Bowman following suit to Denny Hamlin using that outside lane. I think it works for about two laps, maybe three in these cold conditions, and then I think you're going to have to get back down. So we yeah. see Jimmy Johnson clear Brad Keselowski. Boy, Jimmy Johnson, Jeff, <laughs> he got a pretty good car today. Really good he's car. Real, he's going he's up like there to racing. challenge Hamlin. I think this is where Denny needs to get down. Yeah, there he goes back down to the bottom. This is a big week for our leader. We go to his home track this week, Richmond, and he's got his celebrity race leading up to the weekend events there at Richmond Raceway. I don't, has a 48 lit a lap this year, Larry? I, I'm not sure uh, if Denny he has just or not. Let's him go by, or he has a loose wheel, Whoa, I think. Oh, he got a problem. Wow. Johnson, the new leader. Not for long. I don't <laughs> know. That's two cars. He's putting heat on, on Jimmy. Goes to the inside. Man, Brad Keselowski get back that gas and come off a corner wide open. That's a cool move. Uh, this this reminds me of the 18 of Kyle Busch. His car is not really good for the first maybe five, ten laps, but just gets better and better as the run goes on. And Jimmy Johnson's the opposite. His car takes off great. Now, I think that two car, though, overall, from the beginning to the end, is the best car. Matt, what about Hamlin? Mike, a little earlier, you saw Hamlin's teammate Eric Jones out on pit road for a loose wheel. It was the right front. Hamlin came on the radio and said, I've got a loose wheel on my 11 car. Not a happy camper at this juncture. Wow. Alex Bowman oh, man. trying to take advantage of Denny Hamlin and Kyle Larson looking. Boy, that was, uh, uh, that could have been ugly right there. Larson really cut, uh, he cut that 88 car some slack right there. This is going to be the first experience, I feel like, for Alex Bowman to battle with his teammate, <laughs> seven-time Jimmy Johnson. Oh, no, I don't, wouldn't worry about Jimmy Johnson. I'd be worried about that red M up <laughs> sticking to my back end. Oh. I tell you what, Larson is not going to put up with this very long. He'll be wanting to move that 88 out of his way. And this is, if you're Larson, you, you know, you're trying to get back just a little bit, hook that bottom, get a run up off the corner, just get your bumper an inch inside the rear bumper right of Alex there. Bowman there, he did it. Bowman made a good move. He knew that the 42 of Larson was there and he didn't cut him off. And that might cost him a few more positions. Now here comes the 19. And here's 11th place. Here's 11. Yeah. Joey Logano getting past Clint Boyer and Eric Almirola looking. Man. Suarez. Man, and how about, look at Bubba. Bubba said, now I, be, I don't mind using this bumper. I got a good <laughs> bumper, I'm gonna use it. Vince? Yeah, Bubba Wallace, although he said I need some overall grip, he is wheeling that thing, and he is not given too many opportunities for breaks of other guys. He is sticking his nose in there. Pretty good run for a guy that's never been here before in a cup car. Man, he's running it. It's facing sixth place, and he has got a really nice race car right now. I think it's pretty clear, Daryl. He doesn't expect this to go 500 laps. He's driving that way. <laughs> I can tell you that. Jamie. 
Well, you guys, we talk so much about the pit crews and what they're under this year being down a man. And also the tight pit crew. Watch this, the 21, Paul Menard's car on that last stop. Tire carrier Tyler Mitchell. Watch the tire get hit by the 31. When he comes out, he actually still catches the tire. Now that's oh how, my gosh. That's a catch. Even in the NFL, that's a catch. What a catch. Wow. Wow. And that thing is heavy, too. And that power weighs about 70 pounds. And I do know that's one of the concerns, having less you know, pit crew members, is, and they're going to be carrying two tires, and they just come around the front of that car a little bit wider, and on a tight, narrow pit road like this, that could be something we see a little bit more of today. Almost was a scary moment, but what a catch. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I got to see that again. See you got to see this. The first time. That's amazing. Now that tire's like a big basketball. Yeah, You're going to hit look. it, and it's going to go. You see how wide he is? Here comes Newman. See, he's just Coming really in wide. wide. Bam goes the tire. It's going to bounce off the wall. That's, what, 70, 80 pounds? Yeah, with that inner liner in there, Mike, that thing is heavy. And what presence of mind to catch it, keep <laughs> it in the box, and complete the stop. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That, that is, is a, awesome. That's, that's an great. athlete right yeah, there. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's <laughs> athleticism right there. <laughs> Pretty, well lucky, pretty lucky that tire came back and bounced off that <laughs> pit wall. Tell you what, boys, going to have a little battle for the lead here before very long. That two car, the 18 is catching. Here we got a heck of a battle for third. We got battles everywhere. I was going to say, there's a third car that might go up there and battle for that lead also, and that's a 42 of Larson's. I think he's really good right now. Going to try to get up there and join our leader, the two of Keselowski, the 18 of Kyle Busch. This right here is a battle of. Now the Wood Brothers stop, even with all that, it was a 19 second stop. Well pass, done. Pass me that tire, will you? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's tightened up right here for the lead. I think the 18's a little better than the two now. That 18 seems to take a few laps to come in, but when it does, he takes off. I think the same what? thing might be could see uh, about Kyle Larson too. A little slow on the get go, but once it comes in, he's strong. He's strong. What did Kyle say yesterday? Lunchtime? <laughs> <laughs> Snack time right now. Yeah. I'm just glad it's not supper time. <laughs> right. <laughs> going to have some lapped cars ahead for the leaders. And if we're going to see an outside groove form, this is when it's going to form. It's when you come up Ooh. on lap cars. Yeah, we see a piece of that rear bumper hanging off the back of Corey LaJoy's number 72. You know who's really liking this right now is that 42 car Kyle Larson because he is able to catch up with these guys while they're dealing with this with all this traffic right here. Yeah this is basically what cost him the lead before yep. that second stage. Hit Whoa it. now. Now Ty Dillon had damage earlier that's why he's the slow car so LaJoy and the 72 gets by him and I think he learned something last time because he goes to the high side out of the way of the leaders. Mike that it, it, in, in about five laps that 42 came from a straightaway back to catch these guys because of lap traffic. And now that bumper, as long as it stays attached, NASCAR would leave him on the racetrack if they felt that was in danger of coming off. They make him come to the pit and fix it. Battle for seventh here on the right with Alex Bowman getting underneath the 21 of Paul Menard. You can just see that momentum, that outside groove. They can make up time on the bottoms. You see Alex Bowman does that, but as he comes off the corners, the rear tires just don't have as much grip like that 21 does on the top. Oh, boy. That was tight. Now, Jamie McMurray got the free pass. Last caution in the number one. He's about to get lapped again, and we may, oh, not quite have a lead change here. Boy, that Larson, is he tenacious? You know, he reminds me of Kill Yarbrough. Kill was the same way. Kill didn't care how the car handled or if it handled at all. He would he would make up the difference. And it looks like Kyle Larson is going to use his teammate Jamie McMurray's had some damage. Slower car. Use him as a pick. And here's Brad Kozlowski's radio about Larson. He's traffic. He's starting to move up a little bit. He's doing the big diamond of the 60, 70 percent. Coming off on the bottom on the exit to pass traffic. And Mike, now three and four. Right now three and four. That's that's what I saw the 42. He goes in high, then he cuts it to the bottom and gets a heck of a run off the corner. New leader. I think right now the 42 of Larson who just took the lead. He can run anywhere on the racetrack, but but great information by Joey Meyer. He's a great spotter, gives great information. Uh oh, lap traffic log jam here. Kennington on the outside, and on the bottom is the double zero. Oh, 
Oh, wow. oh the 18 really got held up by. It's at the 36. Landon Castle trying to get out of the way. Boy, it's just so you, when when you're as fast as Kyle Larson, some of these late leaders are, you run up on these lap cars so much quicker, they don't know which way to go. Well, Daryl, the leaders were running the bottom. Now here's Larson. He just went around at uh, 55 on the top. So if you're a lap car, where do you hide? Yeah, you, you really you just have to you run just, your line. You have to hold your line. Yeah. That's the main thing. Whatever lane you're in, stay in that lane. Yeah, you want consistency as, as a leader coming up to lap them. If they ran the high line the lap before that, you just hope they do the same thing the next time sixth place Alex Bowman Bubba Wallace that's a battle Palmenar. right there Austin Dillon's right in the mix then here comes Joey Logano Clint Boyer and Eric Almirola yeah Bubba's really hanging on I mean Bubba's impressing the heck out of me today he's doing a great job Vince we got on the three buddy the Daytona 500 winners having a pretty good run here again today as crew chief told me before they returned that they had to barely touch the car yesterday and they have hardly done anything to it today as well in regards to adjustments Austin Dillon inside the top 10 and it has been very consistent throughout the course of this run and remember Bubba Wallace is a, you know he's like a teammate to the to Dillon and those guys Bubba's running great the three's running great it just tells me they're sharing information and getting good results. How about Daniel Suarez a fractured thumb from last week's crash at Texas but he is hanging tough in the top five in that 19. I think what really helped Bubba was it uh, uh, Suarez he had a chance to think about what he needed to do maybe something a little different for the rest of the race today and he's really made he's had a good run so far. Matthew De uh, De Benedetto trying to get out of the way of Keselowski now. With all that lap traffic Kyle Larson just can't get away. He pulls under David Reagan and Kozlowski gets a little closer. Back to the fifth place battle. Great battle going on here for fifth. I love what I'm seeing out of these young guys today especially out of Suarez and Bowman here as we ride along and Darrell Wallace. Jamie what do you got on this uh, Suarez. Daniel Suarez well you guys mentioned it he fractured a bone in his left thumb and he pulled some ligaments and he told me that it's much more painful than he anticipated. And Jeff, you had asked yesterday, is he more of a puller of the steering wheel or a pusher? He told me he's a pusher where he comes over the top, and he said that helps a little bit, but also they change out the steering box to give him a little more support, make it a little bit easier to turn on that wheel and turn it left. Yeah, Jamie, what they would do, they would go to a softer valve. In other words, the steering would, the car would steer easier, which would put less pressure on that finger, and on we, that thumb. And, and here at these high banks at Bristol, there is so much load on those front tires that the amount of force that you have to use with your arms to turn the wheel is more than I think any other track we go to. i tell you what's incredible is the speeds that we're running around this joint right now Mike. We were in the 14s there a little bit ago right now we're to 1580. That's almost qualifying speeds not too long ago. That's incredible 306 laps complete. Just under 200 to go Bubba Wallace gets by Suarez. Kyle Larson led 202 laps here last year but had a speeding penalty finishing sixth. He is in the lead for 120 laps so far.
Well, Mike, I don't know if there's anybody more exciting to watch than Kyle Larson. He's led more laps than any other driver in the field since the beginning of last year, yet he's never gotten a win. I think today could be the day. Jeff, we have so many drivers in the top 10 right now looking for that first career win in the Cup Series. You heard Jamie Little talk about Daniel Suarez and that thumb. He may not win the race, but he may be headed for his best finish of the season so far. Larry, if I said he won in the trucks, he won in Xfinity, he won in Cup, you'd probably say Kyle Busch. So has Brad Keselowski. Two wins here, might make it three today. Excuse me, oh, pardon oh, me. Oh, Hold your line, are coming you through. Me? Jimmy Johnson does not have a top five finish this season, but here at Bristol is the best he's run all season. I'm sure his best finish of night is going to be eclipsed by this run today. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Treacherous up here. <laughs> Kind of like what's going on out there on the track. Well, I had to be careful. Well, with that I didn't know what Laney wanted. <laughs> well, you won here 12 times. I had to be a little careful there. <laughs> Kyle Busch on the move. And boy, he's got grip up there right behind him. So does Ricky Stenhouse. Uh, but Stenhouse now one lap down. And Mike, yep. as, as a driver, one of the things I love to do here at Bristol was when I had a good car is, is how you pick your way through traffic, the, the decisions that you make. You look far ahead at the next car you're coming to, whether it's for position or lap car. And I think that Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson, they're doing a masterful job of it, and it is fun to watch. Yeah, when, when you have a good car, like you said, but I think what really is helping now is you got uh, you got two good grooves. The bottom groove is still usable, but that top groove has come in. Oh, Whoa, Newman turns Larson. Are you kidding I me? I thought Larson came down on the 31. I'll be honest. I thought he cut it too close. I, I Great agree, job Jeff. of keeping it out of the inside wall. Yeah, Jeff, I agree. Newman, or rather Larson, saw the lap traffic piling up kind of in front of him, clogging up, and he made a quick, very abrupt lane change and got turned around. I think Larson's... Wow. Oh, see that roof flap? Tell you one the thing. material that keeps it from opening up too far. They're talking about a talented young man, though. Anybody else would have been in the wall. Now watch this. So Newman gets a pretty decent run on the bottom. Yeah, see, the Kyle's been diving in that corner off, up high and then diving down low. Newman was there. And just all clogged up right there. But not to hit anything. Here's Ryan Newman's radio. He cut across my nose. I think that was obvious. You race your race. You're doing good. But I'm doing, I'm sorry, but he can't just cut across my nose. Yeah, I oh, agree I with agree. Newman. I, I agree. I, I, he didn't, you know, Newman didn't want to spin him. Matt. And Jimmy Johnson already in. Right side work going on. Said he was trying to adjust his braking system some, somewhat uh, to try to help to run the bottom a little bit more. Meanwhile, Kyle Larson said his car is good. Didn't really want to call for any adjustments. Keep in mind, another stop, another set of sticker tires. The 42 Vince, they still have four sets left in their pit. is in the pits and B Bubba Wallace has brought it in. He said the handling in one and two has gone away all of a sudden. Drew Blickensder for the crew chief told his crew just maintain nice and steady. No mistakes on this pit stop. The crew doing just that. Wallace is down and away a little slow on the left rear Jamie. Brad Kozlowski they worked on the turn through the middle of the corner there and the 18 of Kyle Busch is saying he lacked grip overall the front and the back sliding out. They were good stops on both. So Kyle Busch comes out as the leader over Larson, Kozlowski, Johnson, and Bowman. Hey, Mike, how do you spin out? <laughs> Go into pits and come out, and you're running into what? Is third. he running second or third place? Amazing. Yes, second. You, you don't stop. <laughs> you spin, but you don't stop. Oh, my gosh. Gosh. Let's have another look here. Now, watch the 41 and the 10. They're teammates. Maybe one cup the other a little slack, but when... The 42 tries to go to the bottom. That lane's not open. Yeah, the 42 has been making that move in high in the middle of three and four and then diamond in a corner off. We heard him talk about that. Just happened to be somebody there this time that he wasn't clear. Yeah, Larson had no idea the 31 was going to be down there when he got there and the 31 had no Whoa. idea the 42. Wow, great, great move to avoid that by the 18 of Kyle Busch and but some others. Just watch the rear tires. It's going back, 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 back. But when it's about time to go forward, he, j he jams it in gear, I guess, and he takes off and stays out of the wall. 
Sliding, sliding. Which way do I go? Accelerating. Car never came to a stop. No. no. Unbelievable. What a, what a, <laughs> what and a that's show. how he, he could now be the third place car. That's unbelievable. Ricky Stenhouse will get the free pass, so we will restart with 17 lead lap cars. Denny Hamlin will take the wave around to get up to one lap down. And on social media was not happy with the pit guns. Joe Gibbs Racing has been one of the most vocal critics of the new NASCAR mandated guns. Hamlin says that's what caused them to have a loose wheel. And well, they're definitely I, one of the teams that was not supportive, yeah. uh, like maybe some others were, of having this spec gun. They had the best pit guns before they made that rule. Ready for the restart. Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, then Larson and Johnson, Bowman and Suarez. Green flag. Man, the two car just did not get going, and that really backed up that inside line. A little sunshine pokes through. Not much, but a little. It seems like every driver who's been at the front on the inside lane has had trouble getting going these last two days. Here. Uh, you just have to have some temperature in those tires and in the rubber that's laid down on that traction compound on the bottom groove. It just takes two or three laps and then that's the preferred place. Hey, what? Now tires have been a story and that continues. Matt. Mike, this morning NASCAR alerted teams that they were going to give them the option of getting an extra set of sticker tires or they could use an extra set of scuffs. Goodyear loaded up a hauler down at their complex in Cornelius, North Carolina, and brought that trailer load of tires up here. The problem is the race is underway. So the Goodyear technicians, those folks are bringing those tires through the tunnel down to their uh, mounting and dismounting station down in the middle of turns one and two. All this extra effort put on a great show for the fans, and it certainly is appreciated by all. Okay, what we're yeah. seeing a great show right now, the battle between that three car and a 42 of Dillon and, uh, and, and Larson, they are working it, man, and that three car is going somewhere. Somebody that's not going somewhere is the 42 of Larson. We see Kevin Harvick put some pressure on him, but these last couple laps, 42 Larson's been really sideways. I think he's got to recover from that spin. <laughs> well, now here's Harvick pressuring. When the caution came out, Kevin Harvick was about to go a lap down, so that caution was certainly a benefit to the four. Hearing about a tire rub for Kyle Larson, left rear. I don't think that's going to be anything they're going to no, worry about. No, I think that's okay. You still see the layering on the tire, so it's not rubbing much, if any at all. And low air, sometimes you'll get a little rub over there, and it goes away pretty quick. Yeah, that sidewall flexes a little bit more on lower air. He should be fine. Boy, all we talked about since this race started yesterday is how quick the conditions change whether it be how much the rubber takes to the bottom groove uh, when the top group comes in tires now weather I mean the sun's starting to come out if that's the, the I've never seen so many different factors play into a race as we've had here in Bristol got a battle here the two is uh, takes a lap or two to get going once he does he's he takes off and he's after Jimmy Johnson here for second place I think I think Kazowski doesn't want that 18 car Kyle Busch to get too far away from him so he can chase him back down when he get in traffic. I'm really impressed with Jimmy Johnson today though he drove a smart race got a good race car and uh, he's doing a really nice job on this treacherous track. Alex Bowman's having difficulty. He got passed just a little bit ago uh, by Clint Boyer when he went up to the high side. Now he's back up there. Can't get down. Al Marola, Menard, and Newman are going to try to take advantage of the 88 here. Yeah, I, I think Bowman in the 88 looked like his car's a little bit loose on this run. I see it jump sideways every now and then. That's what's got him back here where he is. See a 
Change for position for second place, Keslowski. I, I think that was Jimmy Johnson just being smart, like you said, Daryl. Yep. He, he just really knows this is going to be a long run here. His car maybe isn't quite as good at this stage as the two, and he just let him go. What I see with the two, watch him in turn three and four down here. He gets that left side tire right down on that bottom, right there where that asphalt meets the concrete. There's a lot of grip right there if you can get in it. 155 laps to go as Kozlowski sets off after Kyle Busch, who leads by one and three quarter seconds, and we go side by side. It's okay. Reed Sorensen running in 27th position slams the turn three wall at lap 353. Man, he hit it hard too. Let's see what happens here. Oh, Boy, wait. That's that's way absolutely. early. I wonder if that's not a tire. Almost got to believe it was because that thing turned sideways before it ever got to the yeah. corner. It's like he ran over something, cut the tire, left rear. If I Probably had to guess, a, yeah, I'd say a left rear the way it jumped around. But gosh, it might hit that hard. Single car incident. David Reagan should get the free pass on this. The uh, umpteenth caution of the race. I'm gonna have to refigure. I need a second sheet of paper. 87 laps of caution so far. 146 to go. 12th caution flag. What do you think, Larry? I mean, you can make it to the end from here. They have 24 laps on their tires, but I do have to believe there is a little bit of a concern. I'm going to go back to Matt Yoakum's report. These guys are using a lot of sets of tires. We're getting down to some teams that only has two or three sets left, but I think if I was calling a shots on a car right now, I would come and get lefts only right yes. here. Okay. I would do lefts only. Well, I think I'd get four right here and maybe get lefts at the end. But that just might we, be what well, I think. Yeah, and certainly we saw the two of Keselowski. He liked when he had left. Yeah, That's yeah. when he See, went really up, took the lead, him. and won that stage. I think you freshen all four tires up here. Then that gives you some options if you have to pit maybe later on and later in the race. I really like the job Keselowski has done today. He's won some stages, uh, driven a great race. The car is clean. I don't think I've seen him in any really harm's way at all. Really running a smart race. Isn't that typical Bristol where the leader has a clean, unmolested car, and everybody else is banged all to pieces. I, I agree. I agree. So I got a driver who wants four. I've got a crew chief who says two. Who makes the call? I won every call I made except for a man named Earnhardt. Yeah. <laughs> I told him two tires one time. He said, I'm in and I'm not leaving. Do you that, give me four? That's what I was going to say. I was going to say, it depends on if your driver's Kyle Busch. Or Kyle Larson. Yeah. 
I, I, my, my preference would be four right now. You're, you're under caution. You get a chance to throw four tires on this thing. That get, opens the door for some options later in the race. They're having difficulty uh, hooking up Reed Sorensen's car to get it off the track here. So no, we'll be extended for a Hammond bit always asked me, what caution. do you want to do? <laughs> if, if I had not taken left side tires and experienced what it was like either in practice or in this race, I would be very hesitant to want to take two. Now, Keselowski took them and it paid off pretty well. If you're going to try it, try it earlier. I don't think you want to do left sides later in this race without knowing what they're like. We'll find out what they do as soon as they open pit road. Welcome back to Monster Energy Series racing for Bristol. Pit road is open. What will they do? Matt. Burning through these set of tires, a lot of different teams. Jimmy Johnson said that working the track bar really messed up his exit on that 48 machine four tire change. Meanwhile, on the 42, you can see the chassis adjustment. Larson was saying the car just kept getting tighter and tighter as the stop wore on. Vince. Bubba Wallace pitting from sixth place. They've tightened him up the last two stops. He said, I just need some more stability. In his words, something to hang on to, especially at the exit of turn four. It's going to be a four-tire stop for the 43, Jamie. The two at Brad Keselowski said he had better turn there. That's what they focused on the last stop. A few laps, though, for the front end to come in. A four-tire stop for the two. The 18 at Kyle Busch, a wedge adjustment. He wanted more tire longevity and a Gatorade for the 18. Kyle Busch will win the race off pit road, but he will be the second place car. Daniel Suarez did not stop. Let's take a look at this move. Definitely a strategy call. Just ahead of Larson. Looked like Larson was thinking about faking. Wow. Great job missing the orange box. Can't get those left side tires on that orange box. Interesting. I know Suarez, the best I've seen him run all day just before this caution came out. I guess he's happy with the car and they think they uh, those tires are going to do the job. These will be the first laps that Daniel has led this season. When you see the swerving the cars around like that, Mike, basically what you're doing, a crew chief will remind you, spotter, clean them up. 
all that rubber we see on the racetrack, you want to get all that knocked off the tires before we go back to green. So you'll you'll constantly be cleaning those tires off. Chase Elliott too fast on pit road and Kevin Harvick coming back in for a loose wheel. Boy, they have had their problems with loose wheels last week in Texas and again this week. Let's hear more about Daniel Suarez decision to stay out. Stay out, stay out, stay out. Well, I'm not sure what is. I think on those situations I have to make the call. Depends on what everyone else is doing. I didn't think the uh, three in front of us were going to do that. Hmm. Oh, yeah, a little bit of confusion there. Scott Graves, crew chief. I, I, what I heard was Suarez. What he saw in front of him, all those cars coming down pit road and behind him, I think he would have liked to have also come in and wanted to make that call himself. Well, this will be interesting to see how Suarez can uh, go against his, going against his teammate here, Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch will be alongside when we get ready to restart. Going to realign things. Uh, David Reagan, the free pass car. Let's see. He's, yep, he's in the right place. A lot I want goes. To recheck the lineup order here. A lot goes on here, you know, with these race cars making strategy calls, lap traffic, swapping positions, track changing. But under caution, timing and scoring is hard to keep up with here too. Well, this. Uh, but Jeff's just saying it only takes a few. It, it takes what maybe. 25 30 seconds under caution to go around here. It's really it's one of the most confusing racetracks I think I've ever raced on when you're trying to communicate during the run of talking to the crew chief about what you need. Yeah, I totally agree. There's something we see Bubba Wallace doing here that's so critical when a restart's coming and getting ready to go green. That's warming up those brakes, warming up those tires, swerving back for anything you can do to get a little bit of temperature in those tires. And make sure you have no rubber built up on those tires is pretty important. Yep, clean them up. That's what always the crew chief or the spotter. 136 laps to go, Mother Nature permitting. You know, if I had a race team, you know what I'd do? I'd hire me a weatherman. <laughs> That's all he'd do is watch the weather. We hired one here at Fox. Oh, Larry's I good. I mean, Larry's really good. Don't <laughs> ask me uh, to go into the weather story. That's for a much longer race. <laughs> Teammates, Daniel Suarez, Kyle Busch on the front row, Jimmy Johnson, Brad Kozlowski, Kyle Larson, Bubba Wallace. Here we go. Nice jump for Suarez. Really nice, and he needed that too. I think it's. He better hang on while he can because those guys with new tires are coming after him like hungry hounds. And there goes the pass for the lead. That didn't take long. How about Bubba? What a, <laughs> what a day he's had. I'm telling you right now, they need to lock him in that motorhome more often. <laughs> <laughs> he's driving the wheels off that thing. He's also getting some pretty good brakes by being in the outside lane on these restarts. Uh, we've seen where that outside lane is a big advantage for a few laps. And what I love is he told you, Drew Brickens, he said, give me something I can hang on to. Well, he's and got he it is, now. He's hanging on to her. Third place. Look at him. Going for second. He made it. Got it. Here comes Kyle with him, then Alex Bowman well, I think and Ryan Newman. Big trouble for Suarez. He's yeah. gotten the outside he of those older tires. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He I now know. needs a caution and needs it not to be him. Yeah, you know what freight train looks like? You're looking at it. Now arriving, track one. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get in here? Nope. Can I get in here? Nope. <laughs> Lead trio shooting away a bit here. Guys, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. back in the top 10. They have made nine pit stops between yesterday and today. A lot of repair. And remember, not that long ago, he got the free pass to get back on the lead lap. That's right, Larry. That happened just at lap 324, 46 laps ago. Man. Boy, William Byron almost got taken to the wall as he looked for a third lane in turn two. Watch the 24. 
See De Benedetto having some issues, not getting quite up speed. He runs wide. That gets the 24 of William Byron wide. Amazing job not to cause more damage to that right side. He, he clipped the wall a tiny bit. Byron was trying to become the first driver one lap down and get him in the free pass position, which right now is held by A.J. Allmendinger. If these guys keep racing like they're going to ra like they're racing, he may get a chance because, man, they're banging on each other. Hey, guys, don't look now, but look at this battle for the lead up front. Bubba Wallace wants to lead this thing. He's going for the lead. Look at this. Wow. Bubba, go, baby, that go. That is impressive. And the Richard Petty, Hurry, number 43. Hurry, hurry, hurry goes to the lead in Bristol. Oh, man, you know the King's got to be jumping up and down. Well, earlier I said he, he made a rookie mistake trying to go three wide underneath Clint Boyer right now. He looks like a veteran out and, there. And you know what I love about Bubba? I guarantee he got a smile on his face <laughs> as big as the hood of that car right now because he has driven aggressively, but he's driven pretty smart. Right. Now's the time he can start singing. Look at Drew. <laughs> right. Yeah, look at Drew. He said, that's my boy. That's my boy. Whatever adjustment they made to the 43, it was definitely the right one. He said he needed something to hang on to. He's hanging on to her now. Vince? Will they tighten that car up the two previous stops before this most recent uh, stop? And Drew Blickensdurfer told Bubba, he said, I know it's free for you, but I think the track is going to continue to tighten up. So it should come to us. And that has certainly been the case. And exit of turn four, they were having a little issue with it snapping. But that seems to have stabilized as well. And you can see the 43 looks pretty sporty out front. He really does, Vince. And what he's got to do now is be cool. You know, be cool. First career laps led in the Monster Energy Series for Bubba Wallace. He's the eighth different driver to lead today. And huge kudos to that move or that, that call by freeing the car up and knowing what the track conditions are going to do. Now what's he going to do against Kyle Busch? Kyle is really working him hard. He's kind of hammered on that rear bumper. I think Kyle, I think Bubba would be smart to maybe give, give a little bit right here, and he did. And here comes Newman. Yeah, great job. Whatever adjustments and things that Ryan Newman's been doing. I mean, remember, not long ago, he had that contact with Ford, the 42 of Kyle Larson. Now he's up in uh, second position. It, it, it's just this race, it just ebbs and flows. You have the early going when you got some guys that ain't got the middle going, but at the end, we're getting down near the end, 119 to go. It's time to use them. This whole race has been young guns against the veterans. Ryan Blaney led a bunch of laps. Bubba Wall has been out front. Kyle Larson in his fifth season in the series has led the most laps today. And, and Mike, we are running incredibly fast laps. The last time by our leader Kyle Busch ran a 1540. I mean, that is qualifying speed at this place. You are hammering it. Ludicrous speed. <laughs> <laughs> That's a word. Good yeah. one. <laughs> one hundred sixteen laps to go. Time for a quick word. Let's talk about Kyle Busch's 18 team and his crew chief, Adam Stevens. This is their fourth season together as a driver crew chief combination. And you see right there in 2015, Kyle returned from injuries. And in those 25 races, they won five races and the 2015 Cup Championship. And they have won a total of 15 races together, including Texas last week, and made the championship four, three out of four years. I think it's safe to say they are together, the Duracell driver trust thanks Larry boy the rain is all but upon us here at Bristol Motor Speedway once again Kyle Busch out in front 112 to go Kyle Larson six tenths of a second back everybody racing like it's the last lap and Denny Hamlin has now moved up to the free pass position should we get another caution Brad Kozlowski backing up as the 17 Stenhouse goes by and the caution is out for rain. Yeah, Mike, yeah, I mean, we can just see it coming over behind the grandstand over off three and four. Uh, it looked like it's just a matter of time before it's going to hit the track. 43 was up front for a while, Bubba Wallace. Last time that car has led at Bristol, it was John Andretti who ended up finishing second. 
to the 21 car. That's right. What a day that was. Now Denny Hamlin will get the free pass. Yeah, remember, and be back on the lead lap. They had that loose wheel had to come down under green. Casey Kane has gone behind the wall. And, and that 11 car, how many times have we seen him have trouble in the pits, whether we're speeding or whatever, get himself in a position, get back in the race, and get a great finish? Just imagine what would happen if they didn't have, didn't any have a problem. I know. We're in the final stage of this race with 109 to go. If things get too wet to continue, the race would be official. Now see, this is where it gets interesting to me. The pits are open and a lot of leaders stayed out. Some did come down pit road. They're wondering if this could be the end of the race with the weather. Just another one of those things we don't know. <laughs> well, sixth place Ricky Stenhouse came in, Joey Logano and Daniel Suarez, who of course had not been in in quite some time. Yeah, I think the thing that makes it like uh, we're probably going to go to the end, they can drive this track so quickly. It doesn't take long to get it dry. Vince? Ricky Stenhouse Jr. coming to pit road. What a job this team has done. Significant right rear damage to that car earlier in the race. They came in three times to repair it. He fell a lap down, back on the lead lap down inside the top 10. Jamie? And Joey Logano hasn't quite been as strong as he was yesterday. The car just going from loose to tight. He said, though, that last run he was turning better than everyone in front of him. The 19 of Daniel Suarez in. He got freight train there, as we saw, was running good. His car felt good, but they stayed out, and maybe they should have pitted. This time, finally getting those four tires. Well, the worst he could be, Jamie, is 15th. That's how many cars are on the lead lap, plus the waiver or the uh, free pass car, Hamlin. And Mike, I think it, just like with Bubba and just like with Suarez, it's such a confidence booster to be able to lead a race. To put to, Bubba passed Kyle Busch to take the lead. That's huge, man. That oh. was a great move. I, I, that was incredibly impressive. And I don't know about you, Jeff, but I always felt like Bristol was like Daytona and, and Talladega. Guys that run really well there get great finishes. We don't hear a lot about them, but you come to Bristol, the track is the great equalizer, and guys that you don't talk about a lot have great days. Yeah, that's a beauty of a short track. Well, let's take a look at some of the highlights from Weekend at Bristol, part two. Darrell Wallace Jr. being aggressive to get to the front here, using up a little bit of Clint Boyer and Joey Logano and whoever's just in front of him. <laughs> Man on a mission, driver 43. Tough break for Martin Truex. Some of the damage from yesterday. Putting him 35 laps back, and what a save! That 70 or 80 pounds of wheel and tire right there completed the stop in under 20 seconds for the Wood Brothers. Awesome. And then Kyle Larson trying to quickly change lanes to get out from behind Kurt Busch. Goes around off the nose of Ryan Newman. And those are some of the highlights today. Here's your Busch race summary. That is not Kevin Harvick's car. About the only car here without damage. Be, no, no, yeah, it is. <laughs> 11 leaders, 23 lead changes, 17 lead lap cars, 12, maybe now 13 cautions for 102 laps. Brad Keselowski has won both of the stages so far. Let's check with Vince. Well, it's been a great showing for the 43 of Bubba Wallace and his crew chief Drew Blickensdorfer has done a great job giving him a good car. Tires and the amount of tires yeah. left certainly an issue at this yeah. point. And then also, were you a little surprised that the pit lane was open considering the yellow because of the weather? Yeah, the last few years they've told us they, they weren't gonna open it when they threw the, the caution for yellow. So you didn't get put in a box. So whether you needed to come and gamble on the weather, so they opened it. Most of us stayed, but most of us stayed because we've only got one set of tires. NASCAR gave us an extra set this morning. Uh, they're just now getting mounted, so hopefully we'll have them for the end of the race. But either way, the STP Camaro Z01's uh, pretty sporty. So we'll hope another good restart and we can put a show on. Do you have a car that could possibly win this race? Is it good enough? I think we're close. I think we're close, and if you get on the right restart at the right time, you can get away. Um, the 42 and the 18 are super strong, so I think they're the best two cars, but then I think there's a group of us right behind, and, and it allows us to compete that way. By the way, guys, that extra set of tires that, Na that uh, NASCAR and Goodyear are going to give the teams, they will give the teams, but not until they're ready to give every team their set. So uh, all the teams will get that one set 
all at the same time. Yeah, thanks, Vince. Something must have gone awry because the Goodyear press release said those tires were all expected to arrive here at 12.30 p.m. today. So this uh, delay in getting that extra set uh, for each team mounted up and distributed uh, was certainly not part of the plan. Yeah, I mean, I found out probably about 9.30 this morning that they were going to release this second set of tires. But, you know, the, the four drivers that pitted there, for me, Kevin Harvick in the four, Daniel Suarez in the 19, it was a no-brainer. They were at the back of the field. But Joey Logano in that 22, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in 17, they are banking on one thing and one thing only, that we're going to go back racing. But I think a lot of the drivers at the front, like Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, Ryan Newman, Jimmy Johnson, Bubba Wallace, 24 laps on their tires, I think when they didn't pit, they ba they made their bed right there. They have to stay out if we even if we go back racing. And I'm going to go back to something Drew Blixensturfer said about the, the pits being open because it, the caution came for rain. And I, I, I think it was a mistake to open up the pits. I think they should have kept it closed, run caution, let's see what this weather does. Then if it clears, then we open the pits. So I agree. I, I think it was a no-brainer when the pits opened for the 19. I just don't know if they should have opened them. Well, it's two to I go. think uh, if we were going to have a sustained rain, I, I agree with you completely. But I think if NASCAR is looking at this being just a quickie yellow for a brief shower, right? they're anxious to get this thing back going again. They just gave two to go. It'll be one to go when they come by this time, I think. And, and I don't know. There's a lot of bad. You talk about getting the tires up here. A lot of bad weather back toward the Carolinas yesterday and this morning. Well, there's a green oh, there's blob a here. There's a green blob there. Fortunately, most of them are staying to the south of the speedway, which is the blue dot there just outside Bristol. Mike, just real quick, back to this rain deal. I, I, it would have been the first time, unless it was just a downpour, to your point, that I would have known them to close pit road because of weather. If it was a downpour, like what we saw a couple of times yesterday, knowing we were going to yeah. red flag, absolutely. And Larry, you might be right. It was a judgment call because it was a light rain and not a heavy rain. I'll, I'll go along with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle Larson and Kyle Busch are going to fire off from the front row. Ryan Newman, remember when he and Larson <laughs> tangled when uh, Newman was trying to stay on the lead lap? Well, there they are, nose to tail, and they're up front trying to win this with 101 laps to go, and they get the green flag. Here we go. Well, I feel for Larson there a little bit. He has started on the inside lane, I bet the last four or five restarts, and it has cost him. Now he's up in that front row. Hopefully he doesn't lose too much. Here comes Austin Dillon around the outside. The number three making itself felt in the top five. Mike, I, I think it's amazing today that RCR cars, all of them are running good. You, you know, the 31 car of Newman, the three of uh, Dillon, the 43 of Bubba, those cars are all RCR cars, and they're all running great today. Single file breakout, positions one through nine, and then there's a log jam behind Paul Menard. Tell you what, Jimmy Johnson better be careful. Oh, he's going to let Larson go to the outside. I would. <laughs> <laughs> he seems to be in rather. He seems to be in quite a hurry. I think I would let him go. Sometimes, Mike, you just know when it's time to give. A seven-time champion, 83 wins, you know when it's time to give. And he knew that was the time to give to that young man that was in a hurry. And, and this is something I don't think a lot of these drivers have dealt with here at Bristol. They've never seen a bottom groove like this. Jimmy Johnson has, some of the veteran drivers have, but these young drivers, they've never had to deal with this. Normally, this place has grooves all the way up to the wall. We've not really seen that materialize except for those very long runs. I think we've only had one of those. But remember, rookies don't know what they don't know, <laughs> and that's why they do so well on tracks like this. They don't know what it was like here five years ago or 10 years ago. They just know what it's like today. Logano gets past Harvick for 12th there. Looking at Suarez 13th from Harvick's bumper cam. Yeah, you know, Harvick, I, I've just seen them struggle a little bit more this weekend. Uh, more so than I've seen them struggle in a long time. Uh, just have not been able to get the balance. Boy, Ricky right. Stenhouse, he, he just made a big move past Clint Boyer. He's coming back to the front. Now in uh, ninth place. You talk about tenacious, Daryl. To me, Yes, Kyle Larson's tenacious, but so is this young guy in oh, Ricky yeah. Stenhouse Jr. And he is hungry, man. He wants to win a red. I mean, he wins on his at Daytona and Talladega. He wants to win on a short track. 
This is right Wallace in his wheelhouse. Wallace Bowman Stenhouse. Nose to tail, and then some. Oh, baby. That is, I don't know who's spotting for Let me see who's spotting for the 43 today. Freddie Kraft. Freddie Kraft, he's doing a heck of a job, I tell you that. <laughs> and when we look at Bubba sitting in a car, he looks calm, cool. He just got a nice, easy, holding a pretty wheel and going somewhere. Look at Stenhouse. He is flying, Vince. You know, they had a good car last week at Texas, but they didn't get a result. They ended up 25th. And as good as this car has been this weekend for them here at Bristol, they felt like they must capitalize and get a good result. Crew Chief Brian Patty told me, he said, we've got a car good enough to win, but we got to make sure we bring it home with a good finish. And they've done a great job, especially considering all the repairs they had to make after that earlier contact. Yes, they are well on their way. Show you replay. Things got a little close there as that group was battling for seventh place. Yeah, we see Will, uh, Alex Bowman allows the 17 of Stenhouse to go by, and he tries to get down in front of the 43, and Bubba wasn't having it. But you know what I see with Bubba? He realized that that almost was a wreck, and he has given it, he has taken it a little easier over these last few laps and lost some spots. 86 laps to go. How about a Monday, Monday? Crank it up. One back. Clear all around. Clear by one. I think it's the same thing. Tightening up. Ricky Stenhouse went past Kozlowski for fourth, and the lead battle has tightened up with raindrops on the windshield. Yeah, my, uh, the, the Kyle and Kyle show we're seeing here, but listen, Kyle Larson, he has closed down. He's a little bit quicker than Kyle Busch right now. He's just looking for an opportunity to pounce. These two have finished one, two, three times here in the Xfinity series. Bush, the winner all three times. Sounds like motivation to me, Daryl, <laughs> or Kyle Larson. <laughs> or, or opportunity or something. I mean, yeah. Kyle Larson, he knows how good Kyle Busch is here, and if he could put him down, if he could pass him, what a statement that would make. And again, we saw a little bit of weather come through here. We saw it on our lenses, on those onboard cameras, on this camera lens too, but it seems to have passed us, so it's not as heavy right now, so they never threw the caution. I mean, these guys, Mike, are putting down some laps, too. They're 15, 50, 60s, and 70s all the time. I don't know what has happened to Keselowski. He's just not quite as strong as he was earlier in this race when he won that second stage. Newman goes by. Fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth all in a row. Well, we've got 75 laps to go, so uh, st still a lot of really good hard racing to go yet. Yeah, this is when it gets tough, man. This is when conditioning and everything else pays off. Logano taking the spot from his teammate. This is also when that top groove might start to come in. I'm seeing more and more cars running higher and higher. 
I just like what I like now is if you catch somebody, you want to get them by on the outside, you can. If you want to get by on the inside, you can. It's pretty, pretty balanced right now. Kozlowski way up the track there. Larry, I know it's unlikely that we would go green the whole rest of the way, but what, what are we looking at? Well, I'm looking at the last 10 spring Bristol races, and the average of the last caution is with 18 laps to go five times in those 10 races, Mike, in the last 10 laps, and we have had four overtimes here in the last 10 spring Bristol races. Larry, would you call that a trend? That's a trend <laughs> okay, right well, there. I, I, I didn't just note that Mike asked you. I didn't. <laughs> so this thing's far from over. Jamie. Well, you guys mentioned Brad Keselowski for the first half of this race between yesterday and today. He was a top three car. But as the day has gone on, he said he's just losing turn. They've been trying to adjust for it, and it seems to help in the beginning of the run, and then it goes completely away. So the adjustments they've been throwing at it, primarily air pressure, not helping the two car. He's slipped now outside the top ten. Yeah, I, I just think, Jamie, they got behind on their adjustments. I, he was really good. I think they're afraid to make any major changes, and the track has caught them off guard right now. Jeff, I think they were anticipating the track was going to tighten up. We actually watched them taking Wedge out of that car, which frees the car up. Benny Hamlin in 11th, back on the lead lap. Fastest car the last uh, lap or two, Kevin Harvick has come to life. The closer has just made his way into the top 10. Yeah, they've struggled a lot today. We mentioned that earlier, and that uh, that's a backup car. He's starting to rear the field. Done a pretty nice job. He's running ninth right now. Not too bad, but uh, the car has come alive a little bit here late in this race. Well, and he struggles on the bottom. Now the, that track is starting to gravitate towards the top. We see some rubber being built in, up on that outside lane. That's where the speed starts to come back to Kevin Harvick. So he obviously likes the top groove. 12th place, Suarez and Almirola, who got a little left side damage way early in the race. So Brad Keselowski has now drifted back to be the last car on the lead lap. What's up with the two? Ooh, well, we've talked about heavy wear on the left side tires, and he's been running up top longer than anybody. I just wonder if that clean pavement up there has really ground down the left front tire. He goes a lap down. He's going to have to pit. I, I don't think he can stay out there. If the car's that bad, he's going to have to come to pit road. It's a tough call. You lose so many laps here under green. Lead and change. for the lead, <laughs> Kyle Larson back to the front. Finally put enough heat on him, didn't he, Darrell? He, he just worried him to death. He just <laughs> stayed in his mirror the whole time. And what's amazing, he's doing this on the bottom. We always talk about Kyle Larson, how he loves the top group, but his car's really good on the bottom. There he goes to the inside of the 18. Jamie? Well, Kyle Busch has been saying that he just is struggling with no grip. Well, about three laps ago, he said, all of these tires feel like really, really bad bowling balls the 18 wants some new fresh good year left cars trying to get out of his way as they go three wide off the corner I'll tell you the drive of the day Ricky Stenhouse he Boy. spun <laughs> yesterday back at lap 61 he had a uncontrolled tire penalty on pit road he came storming back he got the free pass a little more than 100 laps ago and here he is in fourth place on an anything but sunny day and Mike remember he and Brian Patty one of the four drivers that pitted his tires are 24 laps fresher than most everybody he's racing right here. Well we've got uh, 48 audio Jimmy Johnson just ahead of the 17 now. Got the 17 coming. 17 coming about two steps a lap. Where's he running? He is running the bottom but he did pit around that last cycle. So a little bit fresher tires. On the 17th Stenhouse. I don't think anybody's passed more cars than Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Nope. No, and, and, Mike, and, and Jeff, I'm telling you, he sails that thing off in the corner. I mean, he is not leaving anything on the table right now. Well, Brad Kozlowski went a lap down. Bubba Wallace was leading. He is now going to fall a lap down to Kyle Larson. Isn't that crazy just how quick things can <laughs> change? Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, one minute you're leading, the next minute you're going a lap down. Paul Menard is also. Uh, Fallen off the lead lap. 
Mike, I never like to say that every driver's in great condition. I know that, but let me tell you something. I don't care how good a condition you're in. When we have these long green runs like this, running the pace we're running, it takes its toll on the driver. And that car all of a sudden that you were hanging on to, you don't hang on to it so good anymore. 13 cars on the lead lap, Daryl. And uh, out of the top three, the top five were involved in one accident or another during the running of this race over two days. And back to your point, Daryl, on the conditioning. The last Correct. time I ran here, I, I drove that 88 car, and we had a long green flag run, and I'm telling you, my tongue was hanging out. I was worn out on that long green flag run. It took me a few laps when we went back to caution to just catch my breath. Kyle Busch just moved Paul Menard out of the way in turn two as we watch Jimmy Johnson and Ricky Stenhouse go at it for third. They're running like every lap's the last lap. Uh, well, we're running out of laps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he sees that 42 car getting smaller and smaller out in front of him. Kyle Busch does. He wants to get through this traffic and get up there and see if he can't use that top lane to make a move on the 42. Still pretty surprised the 42's right around the bottom. There's that battle continues. We heard over the radio with Jimmy Johnson and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. You could just see a, a number of these cars. The handle is, I mean, the tires are gone. You just see a number of these cars now slipping and sliding away. I know a lot of these guys would like to get that extra set of tires and get them on these cars because they need them. Hey, the dinner bell just <laughs> rang down at Goodyear. It's like pigeons at feeding time. They just released those tires and they are scurrying. Well, they'll all be in position if we have another caution or if drivers should choose to pit Hunter Green. Well, I, as much as. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just I, I, like Jeff said, it, it, that would be a desperation move. You just about have to have a flat to put well, under and that Green. Would, that's my concern right now, Darrell. We still have, what, 47 laps to go. If the, if the left side tires are wearing as much as I've heard some of them talk about, we might have a caution due to that. Yeah, you say desperation, and I say, David Reagan, Paul Menard, Bubba Wallace, Brad Kozlowski, A.J. Allmendinger, all of whom re have recently gone a lap down, presumably because their tires are worn out. That's desperate people. They might do some desperate things. <laughs> what a great race for third. It's a great race all over the place. Uh, a lot of traffic right there. <laughs> Look at that 17 car. Great tape calling. on the nose, tape on the rear end of it, and he's just passing Jimmy Johnson and going on. Nice pass by Stenhouse. Matt? Mike, the other guys out of breath would be the tire specialist bringing those fresh set of Goodyear sticker tires back to their pit stall. They're just hoping to get a chance to use them now. Chad Johnson had some recent conversation with his driver, Kyle Larson. We can make it, correct? Make it on fuel. Left side tires are going to be a push for everyone. Left side tires, they wear out a lot. If you can avoid running the bottom as much as possible, he said it will help us. Full straightaway back to the 18th. Fifth place. And see, Larry, I, I, I'm curious to know, we talk about these left side tires wearing out as we see this great battle between Newman and Harvey. I was curious, was it the top group that was wearing them out or getting outside of that traction compound or is it the traction compound that's just pulling the rubber right off those left sides? Yeah, I think it's hanging the tires, that left side tire down on that flat down there where that asphalt and the concrete come together and that traction compound is just eating those left sides up. Look at this great battle. Harvick tried Newman on the top, couldn't get it done, crossed over. It took him another lap to get to the bottom and try to make this pass for fifth. Well, I, I don't care who, I don't care what position we're watching. Everybody's fighting hard right now for every spot. Yeah, but that battle, that's a rock and a hard place right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> Denny Hamlin goes a lap down 12th. Don't you love it though, Jeff? Guys, that we uh, think about Hamlin. We thought, man, he got a great car. He started 25th, worked his way up to the front. He's going to be a factor. He just went a lap down. Bubba was leading the race. He goes a lap down. I mean, just cross the board. All right, among the cars that have fallen off the lead lap, Brad Kozlowski, Jamie. And he continues falling back, Mike. He just radioed something major is broken on the car. I think it's something to do with the suspension. I'm going to keep hobbling around. I'll keep it by the wall, but something definitely broken, Brad says on that, too. Uh, so Brad, who won the first two stages, now two laps in arrears with I, 37 to go. I like his strategy, though. If something breaks, I'm going to be up near the wall. That's what Richard Petty always said. He said, why do you run the top groove at Daytona? 
He says, doesn't hurt so much <laughs> yes. if you hit the wall. But me, me being the kind of a smart guy that I was, I said, but don't you hit the wall a lot? <laughs> hey, boys, look at this. The battle is heating up for second place. Those new, fresher tires and that awesome race car that Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has had all day. He's going to go up there and get second away from Kyle Busch, I believe. Yes, he is. I think that strategy of pitting and getting those tires is certainly going to pay off if we finish this race out without a caution. He's got to hope that he doesn't fall into the problem Kyle Larson had when he ran too long on one set of tires. But right now, boy, he's got the measure of the field. Well, just think about this, Mike. Here's the 17 at the line now, and the 42 is at the back straightaway halfway mark. So he's a half lap behind this, the 42 right now. Uh oh. Here's Kyle Bush and team. Kozlowski slow in the back straight away. He may have, yes, he's been in the wall. Yeah, it left, left front. front. Definitely down. Boy, that saved the 18 of Kyle Busch. <laughs> it did. He was getting ready to pit. And as we've seen in the in the past, other than last August, the issue that the 18 cars had, he's had one of the best cars and maybe could have won some races, but he's had right front tire and suspension issues. I tell you what you just can't uh, overlook is the, the lap times that we've been running around this place. I mean, the speeds are incredible today. It's taking its toll on the car and the driver and obviously the tires. Daniel Suarez will get the free pass on this. I have this as the 14th caution of the day, but frankly, I've lost count. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been here a well, couple of days. 13, 14, <laughs> well, Are you counting red flags as cautions? Somewhere in there. Not if they're part of a caution. <laughs> Oh see gosh. some smoke trailing from the two car. That's the left front tire going down or suspension issue or whatever went on there. Yep. I think he just wore out the left front tire. Yeah, I think that's what happened too. He called it a long time ago. Yeah, I think it was just held on to it as long as he could. Guys, pit road is still closed. I think everybody has to come in and get four tires here because most everybody has roughly 70 laps. So you can't have a mistake here. You can't have those loose wheels on this pit stop. And buddy, you better get, get you better get your car set up for a short run here, Larry, because we're only going to have about 20, 25 laps to go. You can't wait for it to come in this time. Yeah, Joey Logano last pitted at lap 392. He's the only one of the lead lap cars uh, and Ricky Stenhouse that are kind of off sequence. Everybody else at lap 360. Well, that treacherous pace that Kyle Larson has been putting up there, he's he has a ton of lap cars in between himself and second place. So he's going to have a huge advantage when he gets on pit road. No need to rush for this 42 team. This should be the final stop of the day. It comes with 28 laps to go. Kyle Larson will lead them in. Boy, it's like creeping around the pits, 35 miles an hour. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Matt. And Mike, a lot of different conversation up and down pit road. Jimmy Johnson was one of them. He had a vibration near the end of that run. In fact, Chad Canals told him, it is up to you. If it's too bad, bring it. He was able to hold off to the caution. The 42 car, solid stop by those guys. His car was great near the end. They're coming around to you, Vince. Well, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. pitting from second. Ricky said he was hoping it was just going to stay green all the rest of the way. He told Brian Patty, I don't know what to tell you about what I need. It was really good at the end, but it fired off a little slower. They barely got the lug nuts glued up in time to get these four fresh tires on the car, Jamie. Well, that 31 of Ryan Newman, it's not pretty. It's had damage since the beginning of the race yesterday, but it has come to life. He's happy with it. A four-tire stop here, no changes. The 18 of Kyle Busch said he just needs to fire off better. He doesn't feel like he can pass, and he just wanted those new tires that he just got. Well, I'm looking at the right front that came off Kyle Busch's car through the binoculars, and it is grained up, but then again, so were all the other tires. Um, he was probably within a lap of coming to pit road I, had we stayed green. I wonder if he was maybe feeling the left front tire. Sometimes it's hard to tell if it's a right front or, or left okay. front. He's had history with those right front, so he's maybe guessing that, but it could have been the left front like we saw on Keselowski. It's Brad Keselowski's tire. 
what's left of it. And we heard Brad talking about I got a problem with left front, left front, left front. Like Jeff said, I think the lefts are wearing really bad. Probably wore it out. Great job by the Joe Gibbs team for Kyle Bush. 13 seconds the stop. And that's just that huge advantage that Kyle Larson had with all those lap cars between himself and second place. All right, here's Jimmy Johnson's team. So uh, left front is the cord showing there, so that's a sure feeling. Good job. There you go. I'm sure we'll hear that across the board. I think Jimmy Johnson has driven today like a seven-time champ. He's made some great decisions on the track. That was a great call on his part. I got a problem, but he stayed with it. I think Jimmy Johnson has driven today like the champ we know he is. Looking for his first top five of the season. 26 laps to go. I think the only downside for Jimmy Johnson right now, and I, I put Kyle Busch in this uh, same category, he's going to be starting on that inside lane. And not only do you have Larson starting in the outside lane on the front, I'm sure he'll choose that, but you've got Stenhouse Jr. in fourth, then Bowman in sixth. Those guys are going to run really hard to try to take advantage of the cars on that inside lane. Yeah, if I was Kyle Larson, I'd be a little bit worried about that 17 car of Stenhouse because he was coming, it was closing the gap a little bit. He had a, Larson had a half lap lead, but he had to pass his car, Larson, uh, the Stenhouse did. And he's incredibly aggressive and fast on that outside lane on restarts. And the inside lane has not won a restart in the last two days here. No, I mean, it just, you watch. I mean, the guy on the outside gets a huge jump. The guy on the inside looks like he's spinning his tires, can't even get going. And the driver on the inside, assuming he's the second place driver, must wait for the leader to start the race before he can fire off. Well, it's going to be a short week off because we're headed to another short track this weekend. Race day, 3 p.m. Fox NASCAR coverage continues at 6 under the lights in the capital city of Virginia. I just, uh, of the Commonwealth of Commonwealth, Virginia. there you go. I, I love having, you know, I love Martinville, Bristol, and then Richmond. I love them all being close together because it's just that synergy you get from these short tracks, that energy you feel. Boy, a number of drivers take the wave around, 11 of them to get back a lap. I think I would too. I think there might be another caution before we get going here for long. There's some aggressive guys at the front night. Now, Jimmy Johnson had won a race, what, 30, uh, 30 racers or so now. You got Kyle Larson would like to beat Kyle Busch. You got Senhouse on the outside right there. You got Bowman. You got some guys that would love to win this race. And there's Newman. And we know he's a bulldog, man. He'll get after him. <laughs> All the drivers in the front three rows, except Kyle Busch, who just won at Texas, are primed for their best finish of the season. Tighten it, up those belts, fellas. <laughs> uh, it'll be 22 laps to go. Pace car scoots away. Green flag. I tell you who timed that restart really, really well was Stenhouse. He laid back just a little bit and got a really nice run. Well, a little surprised that Larson chose the bottom lane, but it hooked and, and got through there really well. Oh, the 17. Boy, did he carry speed down to the bottom. What a slide. Look at Bowman. He comes to Bowman's got a good yep. car on a short run. Yep. That's been kind of Kyle Busch's Achilles heel. Hadn't been that great on the short run, been pretty good on the longer runs. Larson hook in the bottom, but Stenhouse not afraid to go to the top where he and Larson seem to like it best. Man, he is so aggressive right now. And those two guys are such He's great He's got to run. Yeah, they're great friends. They run short tracks. They run sprint cars together. They love short track racing. And right now, the friendship is out the door. Whoa, baby. Whoa. Bump and run. Oh, Stenhouse is going to get loose off of two. That's all right. He's still there. He's still got the bottom. Some dirt tracking going on for these oh, two. Oh, baby. Hang on to her. Stenhouse couldn't get off the corner, and here comes Bush. Kyle Larson says, I think I better get some go. I better get some get going right here because this cat <laughs> is serious. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson taking Harvick for fifth behind this action at the front. Joey Logano, big tire rub. Boy, it doesn't take much. Just a little contact with somebody or they scrub the wall, and then you got a tire rub. 
Holy smoly, man. Let's go back to the restart and we'll try to see what happened to Joey Logano and Ryan Newman. 31 and the 22 there. There you go. Uh, the 31 yep. just got a little bit loose, came up the racetrack, made contact with that left front fender, the 22 of Logano. Yeah, body slammed him a little bit. 15 laps to go. And the fight is for second, yeah. third, fourth, fifth. I, I'm so impressed with oh. how Kyle Larson's oh, been really patient. And there's no patience here with no. Jimmy Johnson and the 88 of Bowman. Yeah, 88 got a little bit loose right there, and that opened the door for Jimmy Johnson to shoot by. Still a good day for those guys. Mike Alex Wright. Bowman trying to have a career day here, and it looks like he might. Mike, right now is when you, you got to be the closer. You got to you got to take you, you got a chance here. Kyle Larson got a great chance. Kyle Kyle Busch got a great chance, but you got to not make any mistakes. Well, I just I see one of those classic Bristol finishes coming here. I mean, Kyle Busch a little bit better than Larson right now. We've seen the bump and run play out here in the past. I've been a part of one once or twice myself. I see that possibly playing out here with Kyle Busch as he catches Larson. You know what I see? I see a real turning point too for the Hendrick guys. This is a great day for Jimmy Johnson. You got to Larson up there or uh, Bowman up there. Those cars have been pretty good today. Here comes Johnson Jimmy Johnson. Under Stenhouse. Boy, he's not going to give up easy. He's well, going to hang tough right on that door. Well, we clean actually, pass. Remember, nice. we saw where Stenhouse really held, uh, I believe, is the 20 of Eric Jones down really tight, made it difficult. He's going to make it pretty tough for Jimmy here. I think Jimmy has him now. I do, too. I think that he was going to try to stay down that door, loose him up a little bit. It didn't work. Hendrick Motorsports trying to put two cars to finish in the top five for the first time since Dover last fall. Hey, let's don't overlook this cat right here in that 10 car and the four of Kevin Harvick. They're right there, two teammates. But Amarillo has had a great day and stayed out of trouble. And here he is at the end of the day, got a chance at top five. De Benedetto pulls down. There's more traffic ahead for the leader. Well, this is going to be a battle Eight to go. Who can get through traffic the best? We've seen these two be two of the best at it, using that top groove, using the middle groove, the bottom groove. Truex out of the way, but watch that 23 of Greg Galding. He's got fresh tires as he pulls to the outside oh, of Corey LaJoy. A little bobble by the 42 of Larson is going to allow Kyle Busch to get right on his bumper. Boy, Kyle lets him know it too, doesn't he? He says, I'm here, I'm here, and I'm coming, I'm coming. Open the door, let me in. Oh, there's going to be Whee! contact. Yeah, he sends there a 42 up the track, gets loose, oh, takes the Larson lead. got big time loose. But he hung on to it. Larson is incredible out hanging on to a car out of control. Five to go. What did I say about that bump and run? It works. <laughs> I've seen it for years. <laughs> Just hoping that, it, hoping he doesn't catch you back. <laughs> I know which side of it I like to be on. Oh, I'll tell you right now, you know Kyle Larson. If he can get to the back bumper of that 18, you think he'll be bashful? Kyle, the laps go by here so fast. Only three to go. <laughs> three to My go. goodness. Oh, me. Well, that's going to be frustration for Kyle Larson if he doesn't get this win because of those times he's finished second here. He just can't quite complete the win here at Bristol. Oh, <laughs> he's led almost. Got a little brotherly love right there. The 41 dropped down the front of the 42 for a second. Larson's led almost 200 laps today. One and a half to go. The white flags in the air. One lap to go. You can see that's the that's where the 18 gains on Larson. He just squirts up off that corner. Larson gains on him getting <laughs> into the corner. He dive bombed her in there, but not enough. Too little, too late. Kyle Busch wins Bristol. His 45th career win, two in a row. The fifth time he's won consecutive races, including three in a row in 2015. He is a seven-time oh, Bristol winner. Did it, baby. I got look at that car. I don't think it got a scratch on it. The last time the series point leader won at Bristol, 31 years ago, Dale Earnhardt. Coach Gibbs, he gets the team together after they win a race. Says, always has a prayer after the race. Two 
Toyota wins. Chevy second, third, and fifth. Ford fourth with Stenhouse. And Hendrick Motorsports puts two in the top five. What a rebound there. Yeah. Kyle Larson leads almost 200 laps and comes oh so close. But I tell you, that spin he had down the front straightaway, saved the car, stayed in the race, that was pretty impressive. Yeah, it was. Oh, he's always impressive, and so is this guy. I said coming in here, don't get Kyle Busch in a position of more confidence and momentum, especially if you're going to come into one of his best tracks, Bristol. Well, next week. I mean, he loves Richmond. It's one of his favorite tracks. All right, traffic has cleared the front straightaway. They're going to pull the cars in on the back. It's going to scatter some skittles. <laughs> Candyman. Kyle Busch taking home the checkered flag as today is Sunoco fueling victory. That's cool. I wish I could do that. <laughs> and, and, all right. Now go the other way a while. <laughs> doesn't go as well to the right as it does to the left. Regan Smith and Michael Waltrip will be on uh, Race Hub tonight to break this all down on FS1. Perfectly placed. Drop that flag down here, brother. Looks like he's done that once or twice. Mm -hmm. Got a little spurts. We're going to get a checkered flag, and we're going to see his trademark bow to the fans. Thanks, I'll sit down and bow. <laughs> There's some hardy Kyle Busch fans here to celebrate, too. And they're glad they stuck around. Well, some avid NASCAR fans. Those are tough conditions to be in. Two wins in a row for Kyle Busch. And oh, so close for Kyle Larson. There is the bow. Thank you. Let's hear from the runner up, Matt. P2 for Kyle Larson now. The bump and run was put on you, but did your car just progressively get too free near the end? I was really, really good that long run. And uh, yeah, as soon as we restarted there, I was extremely loose. I mean, the 17 got to my inside. I just didn't really have any grip. And uh, I thought it would tighten up for me and I could get going, but it never really did. And I was, you know, just really loose. So I uh, hate that I didn't win. Uh, it's another one at Bristol. I feel like every time I race here, I. Almost going to win, but um, it's a fun race. Been, been beat by been beat by Kyle about every time I race here, too, so that gets frustrating after a while. Thanks, Mike. A bit of a Polish victory lap created by Alan Kowicki, the great champion that we lost on this race weekend 25 years ago. Saluting the fans with the driver's side toward the grandstand. That's what Kyle Busch is doing right now before he goes to victory lane.
Kyle Busch is now the winningest active driver in Bristol history in the Cup Series and moves to fifth on the all-time list. He's moved to victory lane with Jamie Little. And the Skittles fly. Monster Energy, energy drink, the NOS energy drink. It took a long time. Samantha, his son Brexton. Kyle, you started on pole 26 and a half hours ago. Here you are in victory lane. How did you overcome all the adversity with the racetrack, with the weather, to get it done for the second week in a row? I don't know. We, um, I, it's just a long, long delays and, and things that happen that kind of get you in and out of your game. But um, tell you what, you just got to stay focused for the entirety of it and try to keep going. And um, you know, I, I of course used some NOS in order to help me do that, and uh, some Skittles, of course, to help me do that. We had plenty of those during the break, but um, I can't say enough about this Skittles Toyota Camry. I mean, Adam and these boys bought a great race car. We knew it was going to be good in the long runs. We weren't quite as good as the 42 on that long run before that last caution came out. I actually thought I had a tire going down, but um, we were able to get some tires on it and uh, go give it everything we had. We had a 20-lap shootout, and that was everything that it was about was right there, just chasing down that 42 and, and being able to get there. So uh, thanks to M&M's, Interstate Batteries, uh, Cessna, DVX, Eyewear, Black Clover, the fans. I appreciate the fans coming out today. I know it's a... A hard one, a tough one, a cold one uh, for everybody that was here in Bristol and around Bristol, Tennessee, but uh, we appreciate that. Kyle Busch, it is, I think, snowing or sleeting something now. He wins at Bristol for the seventh time. Vince? So much adversity for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. today and yesterday and today, but uh, you guys still managed to bring it home fourth. I know it's a little bit disappointing because you guys had a rocket down the stretch, and then all of a sudden it seemed like something changed after that last pit stop. What happened? Yeah, boys brought me a great Sunny D Ford all weekend long. We were really, really strong, and I felt confident coming into the, to the race yesterday and today. But uh, like you said, we fought adversity. We lost track position multiple times, had to pass a lot of cars to get back to where we were. Brian made a great call coming down pit road and taking tires before that long green flag run that we had. We got into second, and I was hoping it would just go green to the end, knowing that we had better tires than the 42, who was the class of the field all day. Uh, and then we restarted there at the end. Uh, you know, Brian said he didn't get to really check the stagger on these tires, maybe make an adjustment with it. Uh, we didn't take fuel. That sometimes tightens you up a little bit. But all in all, a great weekend for us. Hopefully this will kind of get us going and, and kickstart us into, uh, you know, next week and, and the rest of the season. Yeah, well done. Best finish of the season so far for Ricky. Now let's go to Matt. Rain, sleet, and even vibration with some tires there near the end. You dodged everything today. How big of a momentum booster is this for you and your team as you're going ahead of some great tracks for you? Yeah, it really is a great boost. Um, and I've said for weeks now that we're getting better, and it's great to finally have a result to back that up. Um, we've had decent Fridays, some really good Saturdays, and then some bad luck in the races. And um, although we had plenty of bad luck through the course of our four or five days that we've been here, uh, we were able to pull through and get a great, you know, third place finish. So very proud of everybody, Hendrick Motorsports. Thank everybody on the Slows for Pros team. And uh, my family know I'm coming home. Let's let's get home and get out of here. It's snowing again. You got it. Thank you, Jimmy. Mike. It is snowing in Bristol because they parked the cars. Yeah. The Vortex Theory works. Kyle Busch wins. We'll have more from Bristol right after this.
They may be dressed like the Doc crew from Deadliest Catch, but they are the best <laughs> and the hardiest group of cameramen in any major league sport. Woo. Thank you all so much. Way to go, fellas. For battling the weather with us all this season so far. Caught the big one today. Here are the year's winners to date. Three for Kevin Harvick, two for Kyle Busch. And here's your Monster Energy Series point standings with five drivers locked into the playoffs. Then the Penske drivers in position six through eight. And the cutoff right now, Paul Menard, by just two points over Jimmy Johnson. Ooh, you know, was it a looked a little one. like the old Bristol, didn't it? It sure did. It kind of ended like the old Bristol yes. with the bump and run by Kyle Busch on Kyle Larson. That was a phenomenal race. You know, no matter how we question what NASCAR does, what the tracks do, whatever the weather does, they always seem to get it right. And today, I think they got it right. That little PEJ one they put down, it helped the bottom, and the top came in later in the race. Here's what's coming up tonight on Fox, Lucifer and The Resident. And later this week, We'll be off to Richmond Saturday NASCAR race day on FS1 and the Toyota Owners 400 on Fox. And don't forget NASCAR Race Hub. They're going to break it all down for you tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern time, Monday through Thursday. Saturday Virginia. night, Saturday night short track race in Richmond. Virginia is for lovers. <laughs> <laughs> Copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.